just want to bring in Dawood at this point. We'll take questions in, in the question round a little bit after about that, that really um, powerful analysis of what's going on in Kenya. But I think both Fatima and Michaela have talked about how it's difficult to get the real story out, the real story of what's going on. Afghanistan now under got really important elections mm. underway. How easy is it going to be for journalists in Afghanistan to tell the real story of what's going on? Well, um, it is uh, difficult uh, because there are several challenges. Uh, but if you compare it with the previous elections, uh, the Afghan media is more professional. There are more media outlets. And uh, they are more capable to cover uh, election, campaign, and debates. And I hope the voting and post-voting uh, situation, too. Uh, 10 years ago or 12 years ago, there was just one television station in Afghanistan. Uh, there was no television station at all, just one radio station and a few media outlets. Now there are around 500, dozens of television stations, uh, FM radio stations, and uh, dailies, weeklies, and monthlies. So all of them are covering uh, candidates, their policies, their strategies, and their programs. Uh, but the big challenge is uh, the polarization. Uh, in 2009 pre presidential election, uh, there was a presidential debate. Uh, main candidates went to studio and they had a debate. That was the first time in the history of Afghanistan that candidates uh, were uh, participating in a debate. But this time, most of the main television stations uh, invited uh, all the main candidates for debate. So they uh, interviewed them separately, and then they invited them for uh, debates. So this is something new, uh, that media is educating voters or potential voters. Uh, m media is providing a platform to the candidates, and is also providing a platform to the potential voters, to the electorate. Uh, they can challenge the candidates. They can ask questions from the candidates. And uh, they can raise their concerns they can tell them about their needs. So this is different, and this is new. Um, of course, there are challenges. One of the biggest challenges is uh, uh, insecurity. Mm, a lot of journalists have been threatened. Uh, they've been intimidated uh, by some of the local officials and former warlords. And some have been threatened even by the candidates, because of there were a couple of incidents in which uh, uh, candidates threatened uh, uh, a few journalists. But as a whole, uh, it, it is doing well so far. So my biggest concern is about post-election scenario. If uh, there is uh, no clear winner in the first round uh, <coughs> on the 5th of April, it will take a couple of weeks for the final results to be released. But uh, election date is 5th of April. So what happens then? Would the elections go to the second round? And who will be the two top vote getters? So would uh, the public accept that? Or uh, what would be the reaction of media? Because most of the Afghan media is privately owned. The state doesn't own most of the media. It's mostly owned by businessmen, by former warlords, by uh, those you might call newly rich. Uh, so what would be their reaction? Because at the moment, they are trying to uh, give uh, a fair amount of time to all the main presidential candidates. In Afghanistan, the coverage is mixed. It is uh, um, uh, based on equality and, 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 and equity. So some of the main candidates uh, are getting the same amount of time. Uh, they are also running advertisements. But there is a election media monitoring commission. So all the media outlets, the main media outlets, have to report to that commission uh, about the advertisements, how much sp money was spent by the candidates on advertisements uh, on radio, on television, and in newspapers. So this is also something new, that media has been regulated, and uh, they cannot uh, give more time to one candidate uh, uh, th than the other. So th there's, there's something uh, interesting that we uh, have been seeing, s seeing this time. Uh, another threat is by the insurgent groups. Because if uh, journalists are going to cover uh, voting in uh, 
remote provinces, so they, they, they might be uh, very dangerous for these journalists because <coughs> the polling stations might be attacked and journalists might be attacked. And in some incidents, uh, the rival candidates or their supporters uh, might not be happy with the presence of a journalist because in 2009, there were some footage, video footage of uh, uh, ballot stuffing and uh, the rest of it. So if similar things happen this time, if a journalist is filming or covering uh, these uh, incidents, so there, there's also a risk. Uh, I, I wouldn't worry about uh, that kind of coverage in the cities because cities or polling stations in main cities are well secured. So I'm not sure whether journalists would be able to go to remote provinces and report from there or not. So that's another challenge. Uh, another challenge is about uh, the, 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 journali the professionalism of journalists themselves because some of them have their own favorite candidates. So do they can they manage to be impartial in their coverage? Is their uh, reporting accurate? <coughs> uh, so are they keeping in mind the right of the people to have uh, full and accurate information or not? So there's another challenge. Uh, James will talk about the training that the media action has provided to a number of journalists in Afghanistan. But uh, we can see that some journalists are using um, media as a stick to beat uh, those that they don't like. So that's another uh, concern that uh, uh, people have about media in Afghanistan. But uh, when you compare Afghanistan uh, uh, with the <coughs> neighboring countries and regional countries, I think Afghanistan is doing much better than many uh, neighboring and regional countries. It's very easy to get a license uh, to start a television or radio uh, or a newspaper as compared to many other regional and neighboring countries. And uh, uh, you can easily criticize the government. I remember once uh, President Karzai said when he was in London that the Afghan media is uh, going mad in speed and criticism. And it <laughs> is like that. Um, <coughs> they can criticize President Karzai, they can criticize ministers, the government as a whole. But uh, they are a bit careful when it comes to certain individuals because uh, uh, they still have some fear. And the issue of self-censorship is still there because there are some issues which are still uh, regarded as sensitive. Uh, so that, that's, that's th these are the challenges for local media. But as you know, uh, a lot of uh, international broadcasters uh, are also broadcasting to Afghanistan, like the BBC, Voice of America, Radio Liberty. So they have more freedom and they, are, uh, they would feel much safer when they broadcast to Afghanistan because uh, they can easily challenge uh, officials, they can e easily report on uh, issues of fraud um, and, and accountability. So that's uh, good to have a mix of local media and international media because some of the issues cannot be covered properly by local media uh, because of the pressures that uh, they are under. But as a whole, uh, this is unprecedented, <coughs> uh, the number of media outlets in Afghanistan today and the kind of debates uh, that they are having and the kind of issues that they are uh, discussing or covering in their, uh, in their programs. So uh, I think uh, it will be interesting to see um, the coverage of the voting day and the reactions to the result of the election. So these are the two unknowns that we will find out in the next two or three weeks. And just in terms of the, the desire of the Afghan mm -hmm. people, how, how much do we know about how much they value impartial reporting around, around this particular time about elections, having access to, to different candidates? Well, it, it's, it's very important for the people because journalism is a very respected profession in Afghanistan. Uh, if you're a journalist, you'll be respected, you'll be seen as an impartial. So that's very important because uh, in Afghanistan, as you know, in the history, many people have taken different sides. There were groups, there were alliances, there were um, many uh, parties, uh, but uh, journalists are always seen as impartial. So that's why they have a lot of respect. And they are respected because of their impartiality, that's it. 
and if the media is seen as partial, uh, so then people wouldn't trust uh, the BBC mm, is trusted uh, <coughs> by most of the Afghan people uh, compared to other international broadcasters and, and local media outlets. So this, the trust is key and trust comes from impartiality and accuracy. So that's, uh, and, and journalists know uh, that uh, uh, impartiality is a core principle. They discuss about these issues. They, I've been to many meetings with journalists in, in Kabul and in other provinces. But sometimes uh, some in, uh, journalists might not be able to, to control their emotions or maybe it's too important for them to <coughs> remain uh, neutral or impartial. But as a whole, when you talk about the mainstream media, so it's more professional and it's uh, uh, more uh, transparent and more accurate as compared to like five years ago mm -hmm. or even uh, mm -hmm. two or three years ago.